happening everybody boy big brando and today we're on our way to go help my brother move right now um cool thing about it is i used to live there about 10 11 years ago so i'm gonna bring the camera just to show the room that i used to screen print out of and, and do all that stuff see what the room looked like um like i said i ain't lived there in like 10 or 11 years my brother's finally getting up out of there so um about to move all his kids stuff and then all my brother's stuff out of there so i'm just gonna take the camera along to see what it is yo 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 what's up man you ready what's up man just checking out what the old spot used to look like come get the, come get the room. Yep, this used to be my old spot. Had the TV way up there. That's where I used to screen print right here. Stand right here. Screen print had like a single color screen print station right here. Bathroom was right there. That's where I washed out all the screens. Computer and stuff here. Bed was right here shoes and everything here racks of hats and shirts all right here that's why the tv was up so high it's had all the racks and stuff there that's what the closet was like crazy this house wasn't there either there used to be a big ass open uh open area yo so obviously a few days have gone by finished helping my brother move I didn't want to bust the camera out because we're moving refrigerators and bunk beds and dressers and all that kind of heavy stuff. I didn't want to just bust the camera out and be like, hey, let me record this real quick. So I just wanted to touch base a little bit on um, that apartment. So it's been a while since I've been in there, actually walking through there and all that. It's been, well, I lived there. I moved out of there maybe 11 years ago. I lived with my brother for like two or three years before I got out of there. Um, showing that little room where I was screen printing out of was pretty cool because I remember having that single color screen print set up right there. I used to stock a lot of the screens in that closet. I used to burn the screens. I had a small like bootleg setup where I used to burn um, the screens in that closet. Then I would wash them out in the bathroom right next door. I would wash out all the inks in there. It, it was crazy. Um, even like seeing where the TV was mounted up. I remember mounting that TV because I had all these like funky little t-shirt racks or well, not t-shirt racks but these little like shelving racks that i got from ikea and it filled up the whole bottom i think it was like five or six feet um high and then i had to put the tv up above right and those little shelves what i used to do what i used to do was screen print a bunch of the shirts then i'll fold them up bag them up and then put them in those shelves so when orders would come in and even back then so i'll say this my brother he never really cared about the t-shirt business or running a brand or screen printing or none of that. We've got a lot of money together. Like we used to make a lot of money together. We've also spent a lot of money together, but that was never my brother's interest. He never really cared about that kind of stuff. Um, he would see me do it. He just had no interest in it. So back then, this is maybe 13, 14 years ago, uh, me, the homie Bob the Barber, uh, the homie Ruben, a few of us, used to go to this thing called Oktoberfest. Now, I know that's around the country, it's everywhere. Here in Los Angeles, well, in the South Bay, Torrance used to have this place called Alpine Village. And that's where they would have Oktoberfest from like September 1st to like November 1st or something like that. So for those two months, every single weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday was like a party every single weekend within those months. What me and the homie Bob the Barber would do is we would press some shirts up Friday, wear them Friday night, walk around, do the promotion thing. People start seeing the shirts, reading the shirts, they like them. Saturday, we'd pull up with backpacks and duffel bags and sell them inside there, right? And it was just an easy call. We're making money hand over fist doing this. Um, it, it, it went on for a long time. We were doing it for years. Um, and that's how I got the idea of actually seeing what people how they react to certain shirt designs versus just going out and printing a bunch of shirts right we would print one or two for us to wear we would walk around and then going around oktoberfest was crazy because there's thousands of people there everybody's drinking it's a big party everybody's having a good time people take pictures with you because your shirt's either funny or they like it or everybody's just 
you know, they're reading the shirt and then you see their actual reaction when they first see it. That right there is the data that I collected. We would come back and be like, all right, my shirt worked. Let's print a bunch of these and take them tonight. Or we'd be like, all right, your shirt worked, mine didn't. We'll print a bunch of those and then we'll bring them over there and sell them up. So it was crazy to even think that back then that's our, our process was we didn't want to just screen print a bunch of shirts and then not know if they're going to sell. We would test them out at Oktoberfest and then it was cool, man. Just walking around the room or the apartment brought back all of those memories of doing that stuff. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Like I said, it, it's been 11 years since I've been in there. I mean, obviously I visit my brother and stuff like that. He, his kids live there. So I would go over there to, to visit. But walking through there and just remembering like when I used to live there with my brother and all the stuff that we used to do and parties we used to have and all that stuff, it was cool to reflect on, you know what I mean? Hopefully that kind of helps you guys out when it comes to, hey, what design should I do? How many should I print of each ones? Doing this, I've been, like I said, I was doing it, you know, 12, 14 years ago. I do the same thing now is just testing it out, right? I got to see what the market says about my design. So I just print one up for myself or I print one up now for, for my son. We walk around, we see what people say. I collect that data and I see what the reactions are. And then that tells me if it's a good design or bad design. That way you don't risk a ton of money you know, pre-pressing a bunch of shirts or buying transfers for a bunch of designs that you don't even know if you could sell yet. That way you take the guesswork out of it. You know that there is some sort of interest in those designs and it makes the sale a little bit easier for you. So you don't tie your money up in some stuff that you don't, you're not too sure about, you know what I mean? All right, so here's something I wanna ask you guys because I'm not 100% sure what your guys' thought process is or how things work for you guys. I wanna know, leave it in the comments if you guys are running your own brand or if you're just doing like custom shirts or if you kind of do both the reason being is because a lot of times I talk about pricing a lot of times I talk about um, you know fulfilling orders and doing stuff but there's a big difference between running your own brand and pricing stuff for like retail and then um, doing custom shirts like one-offs or, or you know maybe like five shirts for a family or something and then also doing stuff and acting as kind of like a production house or a print shop where you're printing maybe you know 48 to 100 t-shirts for another brand or somebody else the pricing for all of those are going to be different so you guys see me make the video about the fulfillment stuff i got a lot of questions asking you know should i be doing this is this the pricing method i should do for my custom shirts or is this the pricing method that you use for you know when you're printing for other brands that video was just based around fulfillment only that's not me printing you know um 100 shirts for a certain brand that's not me you know printing for my own self and selling for retail and then obviously that's not a custom order so i want to know exactly what you guys do so that way i can make a video about the way i price certain things when it comes to custom orders when it comes to pricing for retail like you guys see me break down like plastisol transfers and showing what the price breaks are. That way I have a better idea on making the video so it's not so confusing for a lot of people. I know when I made that fulfillment video, a lot of people not were confused, but they were just, they really didn't understand what I was talking about because they don't really grasp idea of fulfillment and what I actually do. So just to clarify, running fulfillment is basically just being print on demand for another brand right so the brand does all their marketing they do everything on their own when the orders come in it comes to me i print them up i ship them out for that brand that's all it is so that's why the pricing margins are a lot different than when i talk about pricing for retail for my own brands or pricing for custom shirts or even acting as the print shop and pricing you know bulk orders and stuff like that so Hopefully you guys can let me know what you guys are doing. Do you run a brand or are you trying to run a brand? Do you do custom work? Are you printing for other people? Let me know what you guys do. If you do all three like myself or all four like myself, let me know also, you know what I mean? I wanna be able to provide quality content for you guys, but I also have to have some kind of data coming back towards me, knowing what kind of stuff to um, do. Sometimes people just say, hey man, what should I price my shirts at? I don't even know what that means. Like price my shirts, are you doing custom stuff? Are you doing your own brand? Are you pricing for retail? You know what I mean? So there's a lot of variables in that. Get a little bit more detailed with asking me the question, so then that way I can make the video for you guys, all right? Appreciate you guys for messing with the vlogs. Catch you guys on the next one, man, yeah.